Um, now I'd like to open the floor for questions uh, from the public. If there's any questions for our panel? Uh, good afternoon. Thank you very much for this waking up uh, talks. Um, we, we are talking about frontier technologies and circularity within economies. I don't think uh, technologies are the goal, but the mean. So uh, how would you say that we measure circularity in the economy? What are the KPIs telling us how much the economy is becoming circular? Because sometimes we talk a lot about fashion technologies, which are fantastic, and we need them. But honestly, I would like to tell the people in my city, this is the way we are becoming more and more circular. If I may answer that, may I just pose a question back? What would you summarize as economy? The full activity happening within a society. Okay, okay. I think, which is clear here also here, while we are sitting and talking about these, these topics is, it's really, everybody of us has to have a, a, a general view on things, I think, because we are always like, it's politics, it's economy, it's social, and on the whole, it's the world, actually. So we all live in the same world and we all have to change it. Um, and what we shouldn't neglect, I think, is that we see that there are some, for example, some, some social trends. There's a social trend towards self-sufficiency, for example. So people have the urge not to be dependent on, for example, their energy provider. That happens without our help. That happens without the help of politics. That happens without the help of economics. That's only that's the purpose of, 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 of a single individual. Now, does everybody know, of you know what a home storage solution is? A battery for, for at home? In the predictions, for example, within the next years, this will increase dramatically. So everybody of us will have a solution at home which will store energy. And the ones of us who have also houses will produce renewable energy mainly out of, of solar PV and will store their own energy in their own storage solutions. And now imagine the impact of every individual and you can aggregate this, for example, and just to point it out, that's what we are trying to do. We try to aggregate this on a platform. So a company with, a multinational company with I don't know how many uh, shops, for example, can aggregate their contribution and show their contribution to the energy transition, or either an individual, a family, a school, a town, wherever, everything can be aggregated and can be measured, and everything will be, and you see it, for example, more, more and more companies somehow align their strategies with the SDGs as well. So if, you, if this all goes into the same direction, you can measure it suddenly. And you have suddenly KPIs, which are deriving from the SDGs, and everybody is orienting, orientating them, uh, themselves on that. Okay, so did you help me to get an understanding? So, for instance, measuring the number of people within a society which are energy sufficient might give us a, a clue. I think so, because uh, from 2021 onwards, you have the clean energy package of the EU. Okay. This is a law which will make it possible that we too, for example, so, trade energy. Uh, let's now, see. Now, now, imagine you're a mayor of a, of a city. Yeah. You could decide that every inhabitant of your city has always the amount of renewable energy that he needs, that can be actually pre-configurated. And suddenly you can also measure the KPIs, what is your contribution, um, to clean energy, for example, and to SDGs in, 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 a, in, a, in a consequence. So maybe I was more ambitious in the sense that traditionally gross domestic product was a unique number to measure economy. It would be really helpful to me to measure gross domestic product with a range or with a ratio of circularity because that really means we are playing circularity. In the meanwhile, we are just talking about different phases, many, many alternatives, which are all fantastic, but we are not really pushing to look at the whole economy in so, circularity. So what you say is kind of you, you would like to have kind of a 
KPIs for, cir for, for measuring circular economy it, on the it, whole. If, if really we are mm -hmm. ambitioning circularity mm -hmm. and we are talking a lot about it, how do we make the overall metric and United Nations <laughs> should be thinking on the overall countries as a unique metric, always with some lacking and some uh, leaks and defects, but, but really ambitioning that, that uh, metric. That was my point. Can, can one of us answer this question, how this contributes to the SDGs on the whole? Because, of course, you're right. It has, everybody has to, ideally we have a dashboard which is aggregated on a single figure at the end, actually. That's it. Hmm? Any further comments on, on that? Yeah. Uh, no, I think it was just a brief uh, answer or response. I, I do understand the question because what you're looking at is not the uh, individual or singular measure of development the way we've been doing it, but you want to get the secularity of our development or the city. Uh, I just was uh, talking with Christina that we did provide, we did issue awards uh, to cities that are starting to apply the KPIs uh, for smart, sustainable cities. So we already have, I think, a set of KPIs. Perhaps maybe it's more to look at how those could be tailored and maybe applicable in your context. But I think they are already there. Uh, yeah, I think that probably also uh, as part of the uh, U4SSC, we, we can have, you know, maybe uh, a discussion whether it would be feasible to have, you know, a new set of KPIs that could measure the circularities. We, we have worked already on um, specifically guidance document on circular economy in cities, um, we, which we plan to publish in November, uh, and that will be briefly presented actually on the 3rd of November. And maybe as a follow-up to that document, we, we may con we consider the development of specific KPIs that could actually look and provide actually uh, figures that could be associated to CDP. I think to GDP, sorry. I, I truly understand that that's certainly something that we miss. We do have, um, as it was mentioned by Motsomi, we do have some KPIs that looks at the uh, circularity in our set of KPIs, but definitely not enough to provide the global number that you, you were suggesting. Thanks. Uh, thanks so much for your presentations. My name is Joost de Kleiver. Um, I have a question from a more legal or maybe government perspective. So I hear some of the concepts coming from a business, which is great. I'm trying to find uh, a bit of an idea how governments or maybe international organizations also fostering, uh, fostering um, uh, the environment so that new ideas can be developed. So how to support smaller or young organizations to come up with new ideas? Maybe from the UN perspective or? Well, we do have, for example, that very recently, uh, I must say, I think um, uh, two weeks ago or three weeks ago, if I'm not mistaken, mid-September, um, ITU every year hosts what it is called the Telecom World, and that's actually a platform where um, you know, especially in the last, um, I would say, three years, um, our Secretary General um, and, and Dr. Lee have put a lot of emphasis on the participation of small, medium enterprises. Um, that, that's the idea, actually, not only because there's an award session where basically there's a competition and, you know, the most innovative ideas, they get an award, but most importantly is to provide a sort of platform where basically SMEs can interact with both governments and industry at the same time and see how those ideas could be eventually further developed. There is something that was mentioned this morning by a representative from Deutsche Telegram, and that was like um, big companies, they cannot go as fast as small, medium enterprises. So that's a natural team up work in certain areas. So for that, definitely 
at least in the technological area, I cannot certainly claim in all areas, but I would say in the technological area, ITU is trying to provide a platform. We are also doing a similar exercise through the U for SEC, and that's the reason why we have invited actually, you know, the innovators on my right <laughs> to, to join and be part of the u sc implementation program because that's where we feel that the interaction between cities can be direct, even not necessarily go through the ITU or other UN agencies, but just for us to provide the platform where the key actors can meet. CDs need solutions, companies, they may have solutions, SMEs may have brilliant ideas that could need to be further developed by, you know, eventually big companies or even just receive funds. So there are also alternative mechanisms, um, uh, for example, through uh, UNDP, uh, you know, that's another colleague from UNDP that is here yeah, attending, and UNDP, as part of the UN family, they also do fund specific projects in this area. And of course, last but not least, it's the World Bank that, as you know, has a specific program dedicated to definitely SMEs. So that, that's what we are trying to do uh, at the UN. In addition, and that's something that, uh, that that's, I believe, quite innovative in the ITU itself. We are now allowing basically uh, small medium enterprises to participate directly in the standards developing process. Why it's so important? Because, well, eventually, if your solution um, can become an international standard, then you know, it's really an added value in the market and that becomes the solution eventually, or one of the few solutions that can be picked up. So that was one of the um, achievements that were made and decisions that were taken during our last ITU Council to allow actually SMEs to be part of this process. So I'll encourage all those of you that are interested to join us and, and you know and help us to develop really standards that are needed especially for cities thanks thanks maybe short follow-up question for the gentleman from uh, australian mobile power is that something that you feel is also uh, in need is that something that an organization like, like yours uh, very much needs to also indeed uh, come to new ideas or scale current uh, ideas well, Austrian Mobile Power is a cross-sectoral platform that has been set up in 2009. It was 10 years ago. And at that time, it was a big need for that because nobody knew what will happen with the electrification of transport uh, sector. And uh, honestly, currently, as it is, and if you look to all the products which are out on the market from hardware, rolling stock, buffer batteries, charging the stations, software solutions for identification and for payment. Uh, yes, the products are there. Politicians and the governments uh, know that e-mobility is one of the solutions. And uh, if all the framework, the legal regulations what we have and the norms would be there that the products could be on the market from now to tomorrow, uh, that easy, there wouldn't be a need anymore for such a cross-sectoral industrial platform. But this is not the case, actually. So, from a couple of companies, small and big, there is a need, and uh, in, it develops always from country to country, uh, to sit together, to think together, and to find new ways of collaboration. And it might be that there, there will be end, some when, and it's should be an end because just sitting together and thinking of things and not doing things does not make any sense, but currently there is a need.